Oh no, we'll probably put it over the stream. But we'll wait until we go on to move it. I'll just keep control for this. You know what you're doing. What was that? Yeah. Okay. Right. All right. Yeah, just shoot me a text. Perfect. Yep. Right. I have no clue what he just said. Sometimes I just tell him to keep moving because I don't want to deal with him. All right. Oh, a free burger. Uh, I mean, as of right now, nothing affects athletics. This is the only thing. That's the only thing that's going to control what gets sent. Everything else is still going to be affected, but it won't affect the stream. Unless you're messing with, like, your volume. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. Check, check, one, two. Word. Check, we got check, 30 one, seconds two. till pregame if we want to 30 seconds till pregame. Sounds good to me. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. Where's my local at? Is that right here? Yeah. Check, 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 check. Yeah, Perfect. Sure That's what I wanted at right there. <clears throat> Perfect. Check, check. One, two. Sounding good. Feeling good. Looking good here at the Nicholson Arena. All righty. 88 won the Berg, your music central, as well as the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome here to the Nicholson Arena. I am Ryan Gildersleeve, your play-by-play -play broadcaster for tonight's action, alongside Cash Brown. Cash, welcome back to the booth, man. Hey, thanks. I appreciate it. Glad to be back. It's the uh, first basketball game on this year, and I'm excited. There's no better game it could be for than a rivalry game between Western and Central. Oh, absolutely, Cash. You know, this is the game. Honestly, you can see this is probably the most people we've had pouring in this early to one of these games so far this year. People know that this is a rivalry game. It's going to be heated. These teams are going to play their hearts out and they're going to leave everything out on the court. With that being said, let's take a dive into what we're going to expect for this game. Folks, something you need to know. Cash pulled up some numbers earlier from the GNAC. And Cash, you just got to show them what you told me earlier. Western Washington has the number one scoring offense in the GNAC, but on defense, they rank 10th. So it's a tale of two halves here for Western Washington as an explosive offense, not so good on defense. And if the Wildcats want a chance here tonight, it should be a close one anyways, but they're gonna need to capitalize on that weaker defense. Most definitely, you know, it's definitely a tail of the tape kind of situation. There's a lot of movement up and down that list. Central Washington ranks in at third on that offensive list. And of course, when you go over to the defense, they're number two. It's kind of an odd spot to be in, seeing our record and seeing how we've played so so far on the year but as you dive a little bit deeper into the numbers and you look at how much these teams are averaging one to three isn't necessarily what that gap kind of appears to be uh, yeah yeah western averaging about 95 points a game to central washington 77 so take that as you will tonight we're definitely going to see a slug fest of sorts I expect nothing less than these teams to go at it in the paint for practically the entire game. We're going to see a lot of court possession move back and forth. I think this is going to be a practically even matchup throughout the first half. What's really going to change things is once we get into that second bit, once these two teams come out of halftime, it's going to be a whole nother story. I think right now, with both of them getting started, everyone getting warmed up, and the crowd kind of filling into the Nicholson Arena here tonight, um, there's a lot of energy. There's a lot of energy in the building. Central's got some momentum behind them. We've got the band out in full swing here tonight. We're gonna get them. We're gonna get to see them do all of the fun things that we love to see them do. Hypnotizing people, pulling out the newspaper. They don't care what you're doing if you're shooting a free throw. It's the greatest place to be on a Thursday night, ladies and gentlemen. Here at the Nicholson Arena. Once again, I'm Ryan Gildersleeve alongside Cash Brown, folks. We've got about five and a half minutes until game time. And Cash, if you don't have any objections, I reckon we're going to talk to you again then. Yeah, absolutely. Excited for a great rivalry game here in D2 basketball, and we'll talk to you guys soon.
Let's go ahead and kick it to manual right now. Shoot, this song's gonna play for another couple minutes.
I'm gonna I'm gonna adjust it anyways, but ADA won the Berg, your music central, as well as the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome as we're here in the Nicholson Arena. Ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Gildersleeve, your play-by-play -play broadcaster for tonight, alongside Cash Brown, your color commentator. Folks, we will be bringing you through all the action here tonight, as right now we've got introductions for Western Washington University, the Vikings taking on your Central Washington Wildcats here tonight. But folks, right now, you can hear the arena get loud as the introduction video starts to play. This team gets brought in with a warm welcome with a lively Nicholson crowd. Cash, I think this is your first time getting to experience. You better hop over there and watch this because this is one of the most killer videos that you'd have seen. I'm not sure exactly who it is that produced it, but it is something different up here on the big screen, folks. If you have gotten the opportunity to come down into the Nicholson arena, you know that we've got some bangers that come up on the screen before these games start. This is a team that knows how to make highlights, and this is a school that knows how to copulate them. Cash, I don't know if you were able to get any sort of glimpse of that there, but... No, it, no. no, I wasn't. Unfortunately, the cord's not long enough here. Yeah. Might need an extension cord next time so I can so I can right. peek around and see it, but uh, I'm sure it's great, Ryan. I, I believe every word you're saying. Next run around, guys. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll barter for another spot. That being said, you can see the fireflies with the band still. You can see what everybody around the arena is doing. People are getting started. They're getting loud. They're getting hot. They're getting heavy. What are you else? What else did you be? I don't even know. Cash Brown, this is going to be a great game. You see the lights turn red. You see your Wildcats coming out of the bench. It's going to be a great day. I got a ton of energy, and I'm ready to go. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think I've ever seen our student section go with the shirtless painted on letters. I mean, that's just a classic college staple right there, and I, I love to see it. Everybody showing out for a rivalry game. D2 rivalries don't really get a whole lot of attention, but this is one of the biggest ones, at least here in Washington State, between Western and Central. Set out to be a good one. Like you said, number one offense for Western. They struggle on defense. Central, pretty upper middle of the pack, I'd say, in both categories, too. So it's it's destined to be a, a great game, and, and I couldn't be more excited to be here. Exactly. And, you know, a couple of players to look at as this game does progress. I mean, both of these sides, uh, they've got some guys that know how how to get it done. Folks, as you look towards the Central Washington side, if you've watched any of our games this year, you know the players that are going to get rattled off here. Number one, of course, Samad Hector has been the number one impact piece for your Wildcats over not only this year, but the last couple of years. He's one of the best in terms of perimeter, or excuse me, post and perimeter defense if you're looking at the mix of the two of them. But he's the guy that can get blocks. He's going to get dirty down in the post, and he's going to get any sort of defense he can in without the whistle getting blown. Folks, we have Samad Hector here lined up at half court to kick things off for the tip off against Western Washington University. Folks, we are ready to get going and here it comes. The tip off's gonna go to Western and your Wildcats are in action once again. Ball being tossed up and here we are. Being moved around the perimeter a couple of times now. Now tossed on in, working against, it appears, oh, and this one's tossed away. It's Jordan Clark got a hand in and kicked that ball out of bounds. It's Central Washington possession. And that's a quick turnover to kick this one off. Yeah, absolutely. And you got to think against the number one ranked offense, turnovers are going to be crucial in this game. And now Jordan Clark bringing it up, crossing half court, taking the screen from Samad Hector. It's going to toss it into Samad. Samad now working on the left side of the court here, driving his way in, trying to get an open opportunity. He's going to get it and it's going to go. There's the Samad Hector we know and love. There he is, making guys work for it in the paint. And you know, we were just talking about how good he is in the post. Folks, the defense, the offense, it all correlates. As Sawastern drives, kicks it back out to the perimeter. Here's a three-point opportunity. This one is up and off. Rebounded now by Cameron McNeil. And here he comes, crossing that big old half-court logo. He kicks it over to Clark. Clark back to McNeil. He wanted it, but won't take it. Instead, now working against his defender, driving in. Shoots it back out, Maverick Sanders. Sanders working against his man. He kicks to Hector. Samad Hector now driving, going for it again, and he's two for two. Yeah, Samad Hector playing aggressive right now. You love to see that if you're Central Washington. So now Western once again trying to get something to go here. This is two straight drives for them, not necessarily going in their favor. Working it around the perimeter as they tend to do. This is a team that loves to shoot that three. And a foul is going to be called. This one against Jordan Clark heading on to the interior. And you can hear how Nicholson Arena feels about that one. Yeah, they're not too pleased with that call. And, you know, who can blame them? They're the home team. Exactly. So that first foul of the game. So Western's going to toss it in now. 
And they'll move it around the perimeter a couple of times in the hands of the primary ball handler here. He works against Bradley Swilly, and a foul is going to be called, though it did look like it was all ball from our angle. Yeah, sounded like he might have got a little bit of wrist right there, but uh, Kai Johnson will go to the line nonetheless. Kai Johnson, the leading scorer this year for Western Washington. He will be the inbounder here as Western maintains possession of the basketball. Now he's going to go up and over, and Maverick Sanders is going to get this one. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready to fly. Bang! Maverick Sanders! Man, what a takeaway there. Good job by Central to just be aware that that ball was awry, and what a finish by Sanders. What a day. It's on the other end. Now Western Washington kicking it around the perimeter and driving in. He's going to lose his man and hit a wide open mid-range. No foul called there, and we're, we're fine with that, I think, as now it's kicked up to Cameron McNeil, who drives, and he's blocked at the rim. Not what you love to see. Western Washington bringing it up now, specifically Johnson. Dribble move doesn't work there. He's working against Jordan Clark. Moving his way in. Samad's going to knock this one away. Not sure if they'll, if they'll put that one down as a block, but he definitely changed the direction of that one. As Jordan Clark now working against Johnson, he moves this one over to McNeil. McNeil, last year's leading scorer, gets it to go. There it is. Timeout's going to be called there. What a momentum shift for Central Washington. That's how you come out of the gate game. That's exactly what you love to see, folks. This intensity is booming. 30 seconds on the court, 30 seconds up here. We'll be back in just a moment on 88 won the bird. ADA won the Berg, your music central and the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. Folks, I am Ryan Gildersleeve, your play-by-play -play broadcaster for all of tonight's action alongside Cash Brown as we are kicking things back off. Here is Johnson, ball in hand as he works across that big old midcourt logo. He's going to hand this one off and Western Washington is back at it. The number one ranked offense in the conference as they drive against McNeil. This one's up and it's good. Yeah, I mean, Western's just going to do that tonight. Obviously, like we've said so many times, number one scoring offense. They're going to get their points. You just got to fight back. Now Samad Hector working his way to his left. He's driving now to the post and gets it to go through the contact. Jeez, what a start here from Samad Hector. He's looking really physically dominant in the paint tonight. He definitely seems like he's picked up on something we haven't seen in the last couple of games as a three-point opportunity goes nowhere. Great defense by Bradley Swilly as the Wildcats retake possession. Yeah, shot's not falling right there for Western and... You just can't let this Central Washington team get this much momentum, especially at home. You really can't. And you know, at home is one thing. That crowd is another. Jordan Clark bringing the ball across half court for the Cats now, and he heads out right. Working against Johnson. He's going to shoot this one into McNeil. Mid-range McNeil taking one. Banging one. Nice. McNeil there with a quick score from the mid-range. And like he said, Ryan, that's sort of been his specialty so far this year, those mid-range shots. What a game this has been. The Wildcats seemingly hitting on everything they put up as here's a three-pointer for Western, unable to get it to go. Maverick Sanders almost bringing it in, but a good move by Western Washington. More specifically, uh, number 20, Nick Welp. That's a, that, he, did, he did his job. He, he did. brought the ball in and he threw it off the legs of Maverick Sanders, but Welp, what a play. Now bringing it in is Welp. He tosses this one right on into the corner, driving now against Bradley Swilly and putting up the layup. They're going to get that one to go. Just too much separation provided. Yeah, good shot there by Will Wilson. Just, I mean, if we're going to be physical in the paint, Weston's going to have to do the same thing, and we might see that be sort of the trend that this game heads towards. As Samad Hector now using his men as he drives in. Now a foul is going to be called, and it's going to go against Western. A blocking foul. As Samad Hector does his job drawing the foul. So, what a situation to put yourself in there. I mean, if you're Samad Hector, all you were doing was posting your man up, and you got the foul just like that. So now Jordan Clark, the inbounder, he's going to toss it up and over to Samad Hector. He can shoot those as he pulls a three. This one's up and off the front iron, though, and it's going to be rebounded by Western Washington. Now bringing it up and working against Maverick Sanders. Here's an opportunity in the corner for Welp, and he's going to get that one to go. So Western Washington picking up some steam now, cutting the lead down to three for the Cats. 
Clark now to Sanders. Sanders at the top of the key. He's going to drive with it, working his way into the post, and he's fouled as he puts the shot up. Excuse me, a travel is called. So Maverick Sanders is going to pick up his first turnover of the night and a timeout called on the court. Folks, we'll take one, too, and be back in 30 seconds here not only on 88 One The Berg, but also on the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. Eighty-eight won the Berg, your music central, as well as the eighty-eight won the Berg. Oh, wow! I already said that one. As well as the Central Washington University Athletics live stream, folks. We are back here in the Nicholson Arena as Central Washington University takes on their rival, Western Washington University. That's a uh, that's kind of the same thing, just a couple of different directions there, Cash. I'm not not so sure how I feel about that, but I'll tell you how I feel about Western Washington, and it's not good. Yeah, well, who can blame you, you know? Go Cats. Hey, yeah. I'm not I mean, afraid to say it either. I like it on my side of the mountains, if you know what I'm talking Yo, about. Oh, absolutely. So 12-9, to 9, your score as we rejoin the action. It's Ryan Gildersleeve and Cash Brown for 88 won the Berg as it's going to be Western Washington with the ball in their possession after the turnover on the last play. And it's going to be Johnson bringing it up. He works against Jordan Clark, continuing upon what we've seen throughout the game. No substitutions here as Cameron McNeil now working against Johnson. And a foul is going to be called. That's an interesting one at that. It's called by the referee that was behind the shooter. Yeah. Kai Johnson will head to the line. He's shooting about 80% this year. And I will add, there was a substitution for Central Washington as Bradley Swilly comes out of the game in exchange for Angelo Lloyd. And the shot's going to be put up and knocked down. So just like that, Johnson's going to get it to go. And you almost want to try and jinx the free throw here. You do, I mean, this guy looks like he shoots about 85%. And it didn't yeah, work. Not today. Eh, unfortunate. It we'll only try works later. We'll it try only later. works against our own guys, unfortunately. <laughs> As here's Jordan Clark bringing the ball up against Johnson once more. He's going to give this one off to Jello Lloyd. Lo Lloyd now over to McNeil and McNeil to Sanders. Sanders on the perimeter. He gives it to Hector. Hector now the handoff to Jello Lloyd. Lloyd, the leading scorer of this Wildcats team. He loses the ball for a second, but he's going to get it back. Now driving, throws it up for Samad, and he's unable to get it to go. Wasn't expecting the lob just that quickly. If he was, we might have seen a jam there. As now Western trying to put something together here to cut this deficit down further. 11 to 12, your score. They're working it around the perimeter. That's a wide open shot for Welp, but he's going to lose it. Not sure if Clark got the hand on it or not, as now Jello Lloyd's going to toss it off the foot of his defender, it so appeared. So a kick ball violation going against Western Washington. No foul recorded though. Yeah, he stuck the foot out. You could tell. Yeah. You could tell on that one. Yeah, that one wasn't so hard to decipher as Wellington makes his way down to the uh, half court and Jello Lloyd puts up a quite, quite a uh, interesting three point shot. That's one way to put it. Yeah, Western Washington driving in now, working against Maverick Sanders, makes a miss and Samad Hector. What did we tell you about that post defense? If someone's going to send it back, it's going to be him. Yeah, and I'm just thinking back to last year when we watched Samad Hector. That was just one of his big strengths. The physicality, especially on defense in the paint, shows it off right there. Oh, yeah. And hey, let me tell you, that's just something that we've come to expect from Samad Hector. He is an athletic freak of nature, frankly. And the fact that we get to use him as Central Washington is the greatest thing in the world. I don't know how I'd feel if that man stood against me on the court. As here's Johnson now driving against Maverick Sanders. Sanders gets the hand up, but he's unable to stop the ball from going in. 12 to 13, now your score. As here's Dawson passing over to Samad Hector. Hector now to Cameron McNeil. McNeil back into Hector. Hector looks like he was going to try for it against Johnson. The mismatch against the guard, and they're not going to have any help defense. 
No, yeah, and I mean, you got to think that they're going to eventually. Samad Hector's just dominating down there tonight. As he records his eighth points of the night, nobody could really disagree with you there, as now Johnson puts one up against Seth Dawson, unable to get it to go, though, and it's rebounded by Samad. Samad Hector up to Dawson. Dawson now working against Welp, puts up the shot and gets it to go. Great drive right there, just absolutely zero hesitation. He saw the lane. Okay. And Cash, I don't want to jinx anything, but number 10 ranked defense is sure shining through here tonight. Yeah, I mean, I've got to agree with you there. It's just some of these possessions, Central Washington's not having the shots fall, but it's just looking a little bit too easy for them at times. It really is. It's it's a switch of one way or another. It's two tales of a story, and I, I couldn't agree more. Seth Dawson gets ready for the free throw, and he's unable to get that to go, but Samad Hector flies in for the rebound, shoots it to Jeanette in the corner. Colby Jeanette scrolling out left. He tosses it into Hector. Hector now backs up Welp. Is he going to get another one to go? He won't. This one is up and off. Rebounded by Western, and here they come. The Knights now moving it around. It's to Welp. Welp not going to take the shot. Instead, kicking it behind. And now a long mid-range shot is taken, and it's off the back iron. Rebounded by Hector. Tossed up to Jello Lloyd, and here we go. Here's Jello working out left. He's got Smod Hector at the top of the key, and he'll choose him. Hector now dealing back. Jello Lloyd working out right, using the screen from Samad Hector, trying to get some sort of free distance, and he's gonna get that one to go with nothing to blame. Now Johnson brings it up once again. I'm not exactly sure what the feeling must be like if you're one of these knights here as they work it around the perimeter. Now a three-point shot, very contested. Great defense by Colby Jeanette. His size is definitely misleading, but boy, can he guard the perimeter. As now it's Jello Lloyd with the ball in hands. He's going to toss this one up to Samad Hector, who takes the three-pointer. Unable to get that one to go, though. And it's rebounded by Jello Lloyd, who takes a mid-range of his own and gets it to go. And back-to-back -back scores by Lloyd right there. He's If he gets heated up and Samad Hector's heated up, this is going to be a really dangerous offense. Hey, man, I'll tell you, we might see a number one spot swap if that's the case. As this one's kicked to the perimeter, now driving in. And the shot is up and good. No foul on the play, so just like that. It's 20 to 15, your Wildcats still with five points of separation. Now they work their way up. Dawson with the ball in hand, working his way out right against Johnson. Now posting his way in, he kicks it out to the perimeter and here's Cameron McNeil, unable to get that one to go. It's up and off the back iron, rebounded now by Johnson. Seth Dawson will be his matchup as he works his way out right. Now it's Colby Jeanette and the defense is going to get a little too physical there. The foul is called and it's two shots coming up. Yeah, Kai Johnson, their leading scorer, good at drawing those fouls from time to time, and really got to think that Central's focus is shutting him down tonight. And just like that, it appears that we've got a timeout on the court, so we'll take one, too, and be back in about 30 seconds here, not only on 88 won the Berg, but also on the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. 88 won the Berg would like to thank ADA won the Berg, your music central, as well as the Central Central University Athletics live stream. Folks, I am Ryan Gildersleeve, your play-by-play -play broadcaster for all of tonight's action, alongside Cash Brown, as we recount what have, what have we seen so far. We got about nine minutes elapsed, and I'm just about knocked off my feet. This yeah. has been some of the most electric basketball I've seen all year. Yeah, I have to agree with you. It's definitely trending towards being a high-scoring game here in this rivalry matchup. We've seen Central just take advantage of the opportunities that they've been given, whether that be off turnovers or just finding lanes or gaps in this dead last-ranked defense for, for uh, Western Washington. So if they can keep capitalizing on stuff like that, Central's going to have no problem holding on to this lead. No, it's one of those games where you need a difference if you're Western Washington. And this is one of those games where you're sitting in a hostile environment, to say the least. You've got a whole lot of people that want to see you lose. You've got people in the front row cheering harder than I've ever cheered in my life, I can tell you that much. As now Johnson shoots amongst the boos and gets it to go. That'll tack another point on the board for the Knights as it's now 16 to 20. 
Wildcats lead it by four. Here's the second of two. Johnson kicks and fires, and it's going to be good. So now 17 to 20 year score, three points of separation in the favor of your Wildcats as Seth Dawson brings it across half court. Out left for him, he's going to have Swilly. Now out left is Brizzy, and he'll choose him. He's going to hand this one off to Jello Lloyd. He takes the long three and gets that one to go. Great shot there by Lloyd, and he's just our leading scorer. A great shooting guard out on the side. Hey, what did we say? If that man gets hot, bad things are going to happen if you are a knight. And now Central Washington doing their job more than ever. We've got another turnover leading to possession for the Cats. 23 to 17, your score. We'll see what Seth Dawson and the Wildcats can do here as he crosses half court. Takes the screen from Brizzy out right. Now he's got Jello Lloyd back at the top of the key. He takes another three. This one will find Brizzy's hands before the rim. And now he's going to sink it. So two more on the board for the Cats. Let's just call it a pass. Yeah, just like that. It was an alley-oop from the ground. Yeah, exactly. As now moving it around as Western once more wanted the shot to the corner, but it's going to be, it's going to, it's going to be the Wildcats taking possession of the basketball. This one to the corner where a three is going to be splashed. Jello Lloyd, another three to his total. He takes the lead. Yeah, he's 42% from three this year, which is absolutely phenomenal. And Lloyd just heating up at the right time for the Wildcats. And Western can't handle what's cooking in the kitchen. We got 30 seconds. We'll be back here on 88 won the Berg. One the bird would like to thank won the 88 won the Berg your music central as well as the Central Washington University Athletics live stream folks welcome back to the site of the Nicholson Arena as we get ready to jump back into the action and action is only one way to recount what we've seen here tonight ladies and gentlemen what an electric matchup up until this point 28 to 17 your Wildcats lead the number one ranked offense in the GNAC supposedly by 11 as the Western Washington Knights bring it across half court once more working against a red hot Wildcat defense now working it in and this one lost for a second Wildcats take possession and Brizzy now is going to come out of the pile with the ball working it around on his knee he's going to lose it and it's Western Washington taking possession once more what a game now on the perimeter, looking for something. He works against Brizzy, puts up the mid-range shot. That one will not fall. It's saved this time by Bradley Swilly. We had a great angle on that, and he was in bounds the whole time. Seth Dawson with the ball, driving, layup, gets it! Just can't stop these Wildcats right now, Ryan. What? Um, I, I, I don't know what to say, Cash, is on the other end. Johnson's going to get the and one opportunity, but... Yeah, me. <laughs> He's 15 to 30. He's got a chance to cut the lead down to 10. Yeah, talk about some momentum that the Wildcats have right now. Just stifling defense right now, forcing those turnovers. And like we said, Ryan, that's something you're going to have to do against this offense. And you know, one of those things that we have been talking about all season long, the Wildcats, if they can dial in their assist to turnover ratio, this is a team that can win the GNAC single-handedly with practically ease. Now, this is a game where that has been proven. We're seeing what we've got going on, and no, no, there's no indicators that they'd slow down at all. I'll tell you that much. As now Johnson's going to put up the shot and miss it. Samad Hector reels it back in, and here's Seth Dawson. Makes it across half court. Now he's going to look for what the next move will be for the Cats. He sits right up next to that half court line as he moves out right. Kicks this one over and gets it right back. Screened by Hector. He drives against Welp, and he's going to lose it, but a foul is called. So that'll be the third against Western for this half. And it's going to be two shots at the line for Jello Lloyd, it appears. Or excuse me, for Seth Dawson. Yeah, Seth Dawson, 68% from the line this year. Hasn't shot too much from there. Definitely hasn't gotten the opportunities as some of the more 
slash heavy forwards, but he's done his job so far on the year, that's for sure, as he knocks down the first one. You know, Ryan, this will be, uh, I'll correct myself here, he actually has the most free throw attempts of anyone on this team. Oh, well, isn't that something? You just wouldn't expect it, I guess. I guess not. As Dawson kicks and fires the second free throw. And this one's up and off. So Western Washington's going to lose the ball somehow here. Central Washington retains possession. Wow. What a fumble by the Knights. I don't even know what it is. They must have, I've, obviously they had to have touched the ball at some point. I don't know where it must have come from, but this one's going to be tossed in by Kevin Holden and Seth Dawson takes over again. He's going to kick this one out to Swilly. Swilly now back out Dawson. Dawson wants it, not going to take it at first. He drives in, looking for the layup, gets it. Ooh. What a move there. Just like that, Seth Dawson adds to his total. On the other end, it's Johnson putting up the three-pointer, but that's reckless as can be. Rebounded now by the Cats. Here comes Jello Lloyd, moving his way in. Unable to get it to go. This one, though, is rebounded by the Cats. Kicked out to Kevin Holden, makes his man miss. Here's the three. Can't knock it down, but it's brought in by the Cats again. Seth Dawson misses the third chance opportunity. What a game as the Knights now bring it across half court. Works in against the, working against the Cats on their end of the court as Johnson puts up a three, and he's got to get one of them to go, and he makes that one. Yeah, I mean, the, the shots have just been off tonight for Western, and they're just getting out-rebounded, especially on the defensive side of the ball. So... Central's going to have to start letting some of these shots fall. You can't miss three shots in a row like they did last possession. You really can't. Is now Samad Hector with the ball in his hand. He works against, not exactly sure who he's working against there, but it doesn't matter it one way or sure another. It sure doesn't matter. He looks unstoppable tonight, Ryan. You could put him up against Shaq, and he's still getting the back down score, it appears, as now Western moving it around the perimeter as they so love to do. Driving in, and that's a charging foul, or at least it should have been. It's going to be called that way. Central Washington regains possession once again, and that's the fourth foul of the half for Western. Yeah, wow, Samad Hector just standing strong right there. That's just a great way to draw that foul. It is, and honestly, there's nothing better you could ask for. The Wildcats being handed opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to score. I just really, I mean, if you're the coach, what are you telling them? Go out and have fun. I mean, this is supposed to be the most heated game of the year, and we're skipping around like I don't even know. As now it's kicked on up, and it's back to Cameron McNeil. McNeil now moving his way out left, driving onto the painted area. He's going to kick it back out. This one to Maverick Sanders. Sanders now hands it off to Samad Hector. Hector driving out right to the post. Kicks it over. This one intended for Kevin Holden. Makes it to him and then to Sanders. Sanders drives, puts up the shot, and it's going to be his second travel of the game. Now they called a uh, charge there, I think. I, I believe it was a travel, but we'll see when we come back from the break. Oh, I saw him do that. 30 seconds on the court, and we'll be back in that much time here on 88 Won the Berg, your music central, as well as the Central Washington University Athletics Library. We'd like to thank our. ADA won the Berg, your music central, as well as the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. Ryan Gildersleeve, Cash Brown, here for ADA won the Berg, as your Wildcats are putting on a show here tonight, folks. 35 to 22, your score. Your Wildcats lead it by 13 points. Cash, what a game. Yeah, it absolutely has been. And like you were saying right before the break, I mean, how many opportunities are you going to give these Wildcats to score? It's been turnovers, it's been fouls, missed shots. I mean, you're basically handing them this lead right now. And if Western wants to come back in this game, they're going to have to tighten up and just really hang on to that ball. Those turnovers are killing them. They really are. And that's a tale of the tape that we've seen time and time again. You know, your Wildcats haven't necessarily had their hands completely clean this season in terms of the turnovers. But in this game, I mean, what can you say? They're looking like Stonewall in terms of keeping that one in their hands. They got glue everywhere as Western now coming across half court. Now moving out left, he sends it over. Doesn't take the shot, instead driving against Maverick Sanders. Puts up the shot, and this one is up and off. The back iron rebounded by Samad Hector and kicked over to Cameron McNeil. 
He now moves it over to Maverick Sanders. Sanders on the perimeter, it's back to McNeil. McNeil, looks like he wants Clark, he's gonna give it to him. Your Wildcats working the ball around the perimeter here, taking a lot of space. Seven minutes, 20 seconds remaining in this first half of action. Now Maverick Sanders kicking to Cameron McNeil. McNeil into Samad Hector. Hector backing up his man. Puts up the shot, gets it to go. Doesn't get it to go, my apologies, but it is going to be the Wildcats coming down with the ball before a foul is called. It appears it'll be the fifth against Western. And it will be, it'll be against Clark. As now we'll see how the inbound play will work out for the Cats. This is something that they have excelled in this season. As it appears that it's going to be Jordan Clark moving it in to Kevin Holden. Puts up the shot real quickly and it's going to be a jump ball right off of it which gives possession to the Wildcats. <laughs> just getting out rebounded. I mean it just I, I hate to say it, but it looks like the Wildcats want it more tonight, Ryan. And when you're getting out-rebounded by the backup point guard at the Central Washington Wildcats, I don't know what to tell you, Western. As Cameron McNeil with the ball in his hands now, he moves it over to Samad Hector, where the sixth foul of the half will be committed by Western. Just sloppy play right now from Western. I mean, there's really no other way to put it. They just look undisciplined out there. I just, I, I don't know what to liken this to. This is not what you would have expected for this game. No, definitely not. I mean, this was a game that we expected to be a close shootout, and it's, it's definitely not trending that way. As Samad Hector now working his way in from the right wing, he gets the shot to go. He even made the lights turn on for a second. That kind of power can't be understated. 12 points to his total. Samad Hector will now guard the number one guard, that's Johnson, as he moves it out right, working it around the perimeter. And now it's Johnson once again with the ball in his hand. He works against Cameron McNeil, and he's going to lose it out of bounds. Possession stays in the Central Washington's, or excuse me, stays in Western Washington's favor. Looked like he just tossed it out of bounds from here. I didn't see a, a Central player touch it. I thought that was I another turnover from Western. It sure looked like one, but who knows? Now the shot being put up, but Colby, Jean, or excuse me, Maverick Sanders all up in his grill. Now another second chance opportunity missed by the Knights. And here's Samad Hector driving, going it down! <laughs> Samad Hector! Boy, you can't say enough about that play. How are you going to leave that lane open for him? Look what he does to you. And now on the other end, a, a foul on the layup. What a day! It seems like every time that we call a game together, Samad does something that about takes my breath completely away. I have to agree with you. And, you know, you, like you said, it's been more of a down year than it was last year for him. But, boy, it sure doesn't look like it tonight. He is on fire. Ladies and gentlemen, getting loud. And Western's going to knock down the free throw on the end one opportunity. It appears a timeout's going to be called on the court. And we'll see if that ends up being the case. It will not. So no substitutions for the Cats here. There are a couple for the Knights. And it's going to be Maverick Sanders, the inbounder for the Wildcats here. Moves it into Jordan Clark and we are moving once again. Six minutes remaining in the first half of action. Central Washington leads it by 14. Moving this one into Maverick Sanders now. Sanders moving out left. He's gonna kick this one up to Cameron McNeil. McNeil on the perimeter, he moves it to Jello Lloyd. Lloyd now into Samad Hector. Hector's got an opportunity, he's gonna take it, and he's not gonna get it to go. This one's going to be rebounded now by the Knights, and here they come once more. Moving it across half court, working against Angelo Lloyd, and it's going to be moved around a couple of times. Now shifting over, three-point shot, not going to be taken, instead kicked out right. Cameron McNeil, the post defender, unable to get him stopped. And here's Jordan Clark, ball in his hand, moving it up the left side. He kicks it over to Samad Hector. Hector now gives it to Jello Lloyd. Lloyd to the post. No foul will be called. Ball finds its way out of bounds, and it'll be Central Washington possession. Yeah, we'll see if uh, Central can capitalize off of this here. You got a chance to really set up a play and hopefully make something happen down low. You know, not only that, but something to keep in mind. The Knights in the bonus as Samad Hector puts up a dagger of a three, but he's not going to be able to connect as it's going to be rebounded by Johnson who's working it over the left side. Moving up towards the top of the key, puts up the floater, up and off the back iron, rebounded now by Cameron McNeil. McNeil 
is going to bring it up himself as he moves this one over to Clark. Clark now coming up the left side, tosses it up for Hector. Hector now, that's where he wants to be, and that's 16 points on the game for last year's number two scorer. Yeah, he just can't say enough about how he's playing today, Ryan. Western Washington camped out here at the logo, moving it out left. Here's the handoff. Now on the perimeter, here's another three-point opportunity, unable to get it to go. But it's rebounded by the Knights, so they have a second chance here. Johnson with the ball, he kicks it out to the corner, wide open three-point try, and he can't connect. Samad Hector on the rebound. Story of the night for Western, just not connecting on those three-point shots that are really what make them the number one offense. As Jello Lloyd puts up quite the three-point opportunity, and Western Washington brings it up once more. Bringing it up outright. Not going to move this one out. Instead, he will. Takes the three-point try, and he gets it to go. Western Washington showing off a little bit of a groove there on that three-point opportunity. Timeout on the court. We'll take one, too. Be back in about 30 seconds here on 88 won the Berg, your music central, as well as the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. ADA won the Berg, your music central, as well as the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. Ryan Gildersleeve alongside Cash Brown for all of tonight's action. Folks, we have one heck of a game. Central Washington leads it by 11, 41 to 30, your score. And we've got just about four minutes remaining in this first 20 minutes of action. I mean, Cash, we were just saying, there's not a whole lot of ways that you can describe what we've seen here tonight while still being nice to both sides of the court, if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I guess the nicest way to put it is, like we've been saying, just missed opportunities from Western, and Central's had no problem capitalizing on that. I mean, if you're going to be the number one scoring offense and the last-ranked defense, you can't be turning the ball over this much, or a team like Central's going to come down, and they're going to score pretty much every possession, it seemed like. It makes you wonder who it is that Western has been playing as Central Washington's gonna have whistles blow directly as the inbound comes in. Are you saying fraudulent schedule? I'm not necessarily saying fraudulent schedule, but there are those times where Alabama plays North South Collegiate International A&M College. I'm sure that's actually a university. <laughs> As Seth Dawson brings it up outright, gives it to Jeanette. Jeanette now to Lloyd. Lloyd over to Swilly. Swilly driving in outright. And he's going to put up the fadeaway shot and get it to go. Right off the corner of the window. The Knights, ball in hand. Working against the Wildcats here. They finally bring it in from the arc. And they'll send it right back out. Working against Colby Jeanette now. Here's the drive. Jeanette gets up, and he's not going to allow a score here. Jeanette's defense has been something to note for this game. As Brizzy now giving it over to Jello Lloyd, and there's going to be something called on the court, which sends possession back to Western. I'm not sure what they called right there, to be They'll honest. Call an offensive foul against Mitch Brizzy. So that's going to lead to, that'll likely lead to a couple of free throws for Western here as they are in the bonus, but that's not going to be the case. An interesting scenario here, as Johnson will bring it up. Moving it out left, working against Swilly here. He kicks it out to the perimeter, and they kick it back to the top of the key. Here's the screen and a three-point opportunity for Western. This one's off the front of the rim. Seth Dawson can't get a hand on it, but Colby Janek does get a hand in the face of the shooter. Third chance opportunity, and they're gonna nail that. Yeah, that was, uh, that was Central getting out-rebounded on that one. You had every chance to take that ball away. Now Mitch Brizzy committed the foul on the last drive. He's going to work this one in to Bradley Swilly. Now it's back to him. And will we see the same connection again? We will not. It's going to be kicked over to Seth Dawson. Dawson now working his way out right. On the perimeter, he drives. And there's going to be yet another call on the court, which takes possession from the Wildcats. So not so sure what we saw there. Maybe stepped out of bounds. 
but either way, the Knights do have the ball in their possession as they bring it across half court. Now working it out right and driving. Here's the kick right back out. Colby Jeanette guarding the ball handler, and it's tossed to the, per to the post where Johnson's unable to get it to go. It's Swilly coming down with the rebound. Now working in and out left. He's going to kick it to Dawson. Dawson heading back out to the perimeter. Now he's got the wide open lane for Swilly to Brizzy, and he's fouled as he goes up for the layup. And so just like that, Excuse me, the Vikings, not the Knights. I Okay, I, see, I was going to say something, but you I was know, like, I don't want to sound uninformed here. I'm not going to lie to you, dude. I just, <laughs> I'm just at this point, who cares? <laughs> Mitch Brizzy going to put up the free throw. There you go. They're going to yeah. knock that one down. I could have sworn it you wasn't know, the Knights, but I was like, I don't want to step on any toes I, I thought maybe maybe I was missing no I there. mean it's one of those situations where you hate to see it but at the same you do. time you really do but you at do. the same time as Mitch Brizzy hits yet another free throw I think that you lost your right to the correct name 13 points ago anyways here comes the Vikings as they bring it across half court I will also say their logo is quite nightish as here they drive Johnson putting up the shot and it's going to be rebounded by Jeanette I will also say I'm not escaping any sort of responsibility here. It's kicked over to Dawson. Dawson now driving. Has the screen from Brizzy. Won't take it. Instead takes the step back. Now moving this one in, and it's going to be stolen quickly. So right up in his face. They take that one away. Now Johnson driving into the post, but he loses it quickly. Seth Dawson got the ball now. Johnson trying to plead for the ref, but not before Bradley puts another two on the board. And I'll mention it one last time. If you couldn't tell, this is a CWU live stream right there. It absolutely is, as now it is the Vikings bringing it up once more, bringing it up outright. I got to say it a little loud a couple of times so I can remember it, as this one's going to make its way in. So Johnson going to be able to convert on that one. 47 to 34, your score, as Seth Dawson now with the ball. He brings this one up as crossing half court of the Wildcats. At the three-point arc, now moves this one out left in the hands of Swilly, or excuse me, in the hands of Angelo Lloyd. He drives, puts up the shot, but this one is up and off. Colby Jeanette was there for the putback if it went. So now whistles blow on the court. It's going to be, it's going to be a foul called against number three of the Vikings. We'll see who that Tijon is. Tijon Sane. Tijon Sane. So his hands not clean here tonight as we get ready for Jello Lloyd to shoot free throws. Opportunity for him to push his scoring total up as our photo op concludes. And a color commentator's dream right here, 97% from the free throw line is Jello Lloyd this year. And that's not on a shortage of attempts. He's 30 for 31 coming into this game. Hey, and let me tell you, Cash, this is a man that's going to knock him down. Hey, th that number in and of itself, it tells you that. But he's sitting there and knocking these down just at one after one after one after one. You see everybody, they're enchanting this thing. I'm doing it myself as he's going to knock down both shots. There's, you can't jinx the man. You really I'm can't. I'm not even worried about it. You really can't. He's unbreakable. As now bringing it across half court once more. It's going to be Sane as he moves out right. Working against Brizzy now, he puts up the shot. He's not going to get the first one to go, but a wide open second chance opportunity is going to be knocked down. Now in the hands of Jordan Clark. Clark going to give this one over, and it's going to be Jello Lloyd bringing it across half court once more. Working against Sane here. It's going to have 21 seconds on the clock. There's about two seconds separating the shot and game clock. Maybe make it about three. Jello Lloyd's just getting comfortable here. He's got less than, he's got five seconds to work with now. Two seconds. He's going to take the three. And wow, oh my <laughs> Lord. In oh. his face. Ladies and gentlemen, put it on Sports Center. You can't believe it because right down here when they were coming back, Sane was talking some smack to Jello Lloyd and Jello just held on to that ball until the end, knocked it down for three, quieted him real quick. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, we have reached halftime. Your first half of action has concluded. Your Wildcats ahead 52 to 36. That's right, a 16 point lead. We'll be back in just a few moments as we detail all of what we saw in the first half. 88 when the bird would like
88 won the Berg, your Music Central, as well as the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. Ryan Gildersleeve, your play-by-play -play commentator for tonight's for tonight's uh, action, alongside Cashtifer Brown. Hello, how are you? Doing great, doing great. I mean, you can't ask for much more if you're a Central Washington fan coming in with a sizable lead at halftime. But, you know, with the number one ranked offense, we've mentioned this time and time again, you can't count Western out. I mean, you just can't. They've, they've definitely got the uh, ability to be fiery and, and be explosive. So Central's going to have to stay on their game coming into the second half. But things are certainly looking bright if you're, if you're a Wildcat. Hey, and let me tell you, Cash, we got a list sitting in front of us. It tells us who the top scoring offenses are and the top scoring defenses are. We've already said it. Western Washington, the best offense, the worst defense. And let me tell you guys, I feel like Santa Claus here tonight because I'm checking this list and checking it twice every time they come down the court. I can't imagine where this number one came from. 95 points a game. Were they playing Big Bend Community College? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Halftime here at the Nicholson Arena as your Wildcats lead it 52 to 36, a 16 point lead as they have been strutting all night long. Ladies and gentlemen, your leading scorers as of now, Samad Hector. We all know he's a dangerous man, but he's shown it off on the court here tonight alongside Jello Lloyd. He took the number one seed after last game, really. He had a killer game. Dropped over 30 points against Northwest Nazarene University against somebody that me and you know very well, Cash. Biggie Bergerson. The man, the myth, the greatest name in GNAC history. It really is. You, you just can't deny it. Then he went, we went ahead and did the red hair, and you just can't deny the man's greatness. You can't. You know, all he does, it seems, is is make these claims to fame. And yeah. Every time they're processed between one to two business days. Yeah. I mean, I I can't disagree. Biggie Bergerson, great name, great hair. Wish he played for a better basketball team. I do too. I really do. He should come over to Central. He should. He should. Now, this isn't any sort of official plea, but <laughs> I will say, I hear that Biggie Bergerson likes the Hills. Yeah, I heard that. Uh, I heard the transfer portal's open. Yeah, I don't know. There's something about Idaho these days. It just isn't necessarily what uh, what he may be looking for. Is so. that where Northwest Nazarene is? It is Nampa, Idaho. Wow. Yeah, let me tell you, man, when I was young, I attended a church camp where NNU tried to indoctrinate me. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we have a Wildcat team on the court here tonight that is being fueled not only by this incredible crowd, not only by Kendrick Lamar bumping over the speakers, but also by an incredible momentum streak that they brought not only into this game, but through the entire first half. Central has not slowed down one step. As we previously mentioned, a 16-point lead coming out of the break. We were just about 20 seconds away from rejoining the action. And Cash, I just want to know, is there anything that you can see which Central Washington needs to improve upon in the second half? I, I really can't, Ryan. I mean, they've been capitalizing off of turnovers. If, if anything, I mean, rebounding on defense could maybe be a little bit better. There's been some times down in the paint that uh, Western has just, you know, outboxed us and got the rebounds, but you're not going to win every rebound in basketball. So I think Central's doing just as good as they can, you know, on track for over 100 points this game. And that's how you're going to have to keep up with Western. And the Central defense has really been showing out and shutting down this number one offense. But... If I was Western right now, you've really just got to limit those turnovers. They've been absolutely detrimental to all their momentum. They, they start coming back, then they lose a bad turnover, have a foul. It's just, it hasn't been a, it's been a sloppy night so far for Western Washington. But like I said, you can't count them out. You know this offense can be explosive. Hey, and that's just that. Let me tell you, folks, we know this team can play, and we don't got to wait any longer. The game has restarted, and we're ready to get it going as Welp's going to toss it out right. And here are the Vikings tossing it around the perimeter. Welp with the ball in hand. Had to make sure I still remember them as it's working around, as it's now driving in towards the post. And there's going to be a foul called on the court. It's an interesting one at that. And we'll see who they call it against as not even 25 seconds into the second half of action, we've got our first foul. And you kind of figured that it was going to go against Maverick Sanders there, though when he does come up from the ground, one would have to wonder if something else maybe would have happened down there. 
But with that being said, you can hear this Nicholson Arena crowd and how they feel. First shot will go. Jonathan Ned, 76% from the free throw line so far this year. He knocks one down right there. And he's been quite active with the ball in his hands here tonight as he's going to knock down his second shot. That will give him, I believe, six points here on the night as Jordan Clark bringing it up to the Wildcats now. Crossing half court, he's got Cameron McNeil out left. Bradley Swilly out right, he'll choose Swilly. Now collapsed and then it's over to Samad. Samad Hector with the mid range and he had no one to contest that. Samad Hector, 18 points. Yeah, I mean, just a great shot from Hector right there. Like you said, nobody up there to contest. And you got to think maybe Western at halftime should have made some adjustments to be a little more aggressive on defense. We didn't see it right there. And only time will tell if that is something that starts to develop. But Johnson with the ball in hands, everything's starting to look the exact same. Now driving in once again, takes a shot. And after nailing the free throws, he's unable to get this one to go. It'll finally be brought in by Welp, and he's going to get that one to go. Yeah, there's those rebounds I was talking about. I mean, Central, it's a contested box down there, but I mean, Central could have came away with that one. Now Jordan Clark with the mid-range shot. And once again, no one guarding him. Two points. Bringing it up is Johnson once again. Matched up against Bradley Swilly. He's got Yelp out right. Instead, he'll kick this one right ahead. Back to Johnson, and he's got an easy opportunity. Can't let the, I don't even know. It, it's not even a pick and roll. It's a roll and roll. Yeah, I mean, you just got to keep track of their leading scorer and Kai Johnson. He, he's the one who's going to, you know, be able to swing this game back if, if Western has a chance here. Definitely creating his own opportunities is now Samad Hector with the ball. He's going to give this one over to Cameron McNeil. McNeil now to Swilly. Swilly's going to drive, kick it to Samad, and he's not going to be able to get that one to go, unfortunately. Yeah, that's, that's a layup he's going to want to have back. As now Johnson moving out left, using the screen from Welp. He's going to toss it back over to him. Welp now kicks this one out left, and it's going to move that direction once more. Now on the left side of the court, working against the Cats, moving it into the post. Maverick Sanders, defense is going to be enough to keep the ball out of the rim, but it's going to be a second chance opportunity that goes for Western, and that's not the way that you want that to go. No, it's definitely not in... Like we said, those rebounds, I mean, that, that's how you're going to start falling behind in this game. If you're central, you need to stay aggressive getting that ball back. So 56 to 44, your score, a 12 point lead for the Wildcats. And as they take a timeout on the court, we'll take one, two, and be back in about 30 seconds. Here on 88 One The Berg, your music central, as well as the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. ADA won the Berg, your music central, as well as the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. Ryan Gildersleeve here, your play-by-play -play broadcaster for all of tonight's action, alongside Cash Brown, as we dive into what has been an incredible night of action here at the Nicholson Arena, your Central Washington Wildcats, beating the opponent and number one rival, Western Washington University, by a score of 56 to 14. That's right. 12 points separate Central Washington. I believe you meant to say 44. What'd I say? 14. Oh, well, hey, you, you can't go against what the brain wants to think. Hey, I, I can't blame you. So it'll be Cameron McNeil, the inbounder for the Cats here, as he tosses this one into Seth Dawson. An interesting turn of events to end our last drive there, but it is the Wildcats with the ball in hand. Seth Dawson. Going to work this one out right off the screen from Colby Jeanette. Now he's going to kick it over to Samad Hector. Hector out left to Cameron McNeil. And now this one to Jeanette. Jeanette working against Johnson. Wants the shot. Won't take it. Gives it to Dawson. Dawson has Jello Lloyd across the court. Isn't going to give it to him. Instead, we'll put up the shot and draw the foul. Johnson will commit that one, and it'll be his first. That's yeah, a good play. Just sticking around. Like you said, he had the kick out, but decided to go up and stay strong with it and draws the foul. And so it'll be Seth Dawson putting up some shots from the charity stripe here. Seth Dawson shooting just about 68% from the free throw line this year. Like we said, the most free throw attempts of any Wildcat so far this year. And I'm not going to speak anymore. Unable to get that first one to go. He's got another one coming up. Yeah. 
Well, we'll see if Seth Dawson is able to cash in on his second attempt here. I guess you really got to wait until after the first free throw to rattle off. The, yeah, the he's got a, he's got now a 13 point lead for the Wildcats. It's going to knock down the second one. Doing his job to make sure that percentage doesn't sink too, too low. As now Johnson with the ball in hand. They're definitely trying to get him the ball a little bit more as he works against Colby Jeanette, who has been one of the better defenders for the Cats, but he's unable to get anything to go on that play. Two points to Western, as now Colby Jeanette is going to go and get his own, and a foul, and one opportunity for Colby. Yeah, they just weren't ready for the fast break right there. I mean, that's just a great, that's just a great counter attack right there by the Wildcats. You couldn't have asked for anything better there, really. It's a 13-point lead and a chance to kick it up to 14 with this free throw via Colby Jeanette as this one's going to be up and good. And 100% uh, from the free throw line is Colby Jeanette so far this year. Wow, chills just saying it. I don't even, my man, <laughs> what can you say? Johnson kicking this one out right. Western now searching for something, driving against Jello Lloyd, loses it. Jello's able to pluck it out. Western will retain possession. And it looks like number 44 of Western Washington, not so happy with that, that being Will Wilson. Wow, Will Wilson, he will. As now Wilson with the ball in hand, puts up the shot from the mid-range, gets it to go. Yeah, there's Might Will Might as well Wilson. call him Will Will's son. As now here's Seth Dawson, ball in hand, working his way against Will's son, and he gets sunned. What a play on words right there, well done. Hey, I'm telling you, man, it's like a game of whirl going on in my brain every time these guys come down the lane as now Will Wilson working against Seth Dawson. Dawson now showing off some aggressive defense. Here's the shot from Wilson, and the, he's unable to prove his ability to claim the name of mid-range merchant, but a foul called on the other end. It'll be a push as Will Wilson getting a little angry there, going to block after the whistle blows, and the referee sharing a couple of words with him. And there's going to be a timeout on the court, so we'll take one, too. Be back in about 30 seconds here, not only on 88 won The Berg, your music central, but also the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. ADA won the bird, your music central, as well as the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. Your Central Washington University Wildcats taking on the Vikings of Western Washington. Folks, this has been quite the game tonight, as night might, might be the word to call out there. I mean, hey. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Let me maybe tell you. Let me tell you, hey, if you want to stir up some commotion on the other side of the mountains, you better call one man and one man only. With that being said, let's turn our direction back towards the court as Central Washington rejoins the action here. Western already moving their way into our end of the court. We'll see what this game is going to end up giving us next. It's a 14-point lead currently for the Cats, and they've maintained that kind of style throughout the majority of this game. Now here's Seth Dawson, ball in hand, moving his way up. He's got Samad Hector outright. He's going to give it to him. Samad Hector now working his way in against Welp. He's going to lose it and then grab it back. Now he's going to drive against Welp once again, looking for another opportunity. Here's Colby Jeanette from three, unable to get it to go, and it's going to land in the hands of Welp. Tosses this one up to Johnson. Johnson now against Jello Lloyd. Gets the shot up, doesn't get it to go. Rebounded now by Jello Lloyd. Here's what's like Circuit's Olay out here tonight. I have to agree with you. Jello Lloyd just went on a tear right there. Great pass after the step up three. Jeez, you can't ask for more from the kid. My own kids won't have vocal cords after this as Jello Lloyd to Samad Hector. What a play. Two more points on the board for the Cats. They lead it by 19. 
on the other end. And better finish. Pushes the lead to 19, is now on the other end. Once again, the Vikings look to build some momentum. Colby Jeanette on the perimeter. It's, this one's going to be tossed on in. Now working their way to the mid-range opportunity. This one's going to be up and over the rim. And whistles will blow. Not exactly a push is going to be called. It looks like it'll be against Jello Lloyd. I didn't see that one myself. I didn't either, but you know. A call is a call. One they've way got or a another. better vantage point down there than we do all the way up here on the opposite side of the court. But yeah, yeah I, I wasn't quite sure what they were seeing there. They do have a little bit more authority than we may. As this one's kicked into Johnson, he's going to have a wide open three and he's going to miss it. As now he's going to bobble it. And it's Central Washington basketball. And I mean, that's that's just the story of the night for Western. I mean, just missed opportunities. He had a wide open three from your top scorer, and he just he just misses it. Yeah, it's not ideal. That's no, and the I nicest mean, way I can put it. If you want to come back in this game, those are the shots you just absolutely have to make. Uncontested, you're the top scorer. You just you have to put that one down. So Seth Dawson working his way up now, driving up. And he's going to be fouled as he almost catches a body on what would have been an electric slam. Going at each other's throats here tonight are these two teams. Yeah, and Kai Johnson got stared down right there at the end of that play. And boy, you can just feel that the chippiness between these teams and the crowd playing a factor, getting them fired up. And I mean, I'll say it again, these teams just do not like each other, Ryan. Hey, let me tell you, if I'm Western Washington, there's a message that I want to hear, and it is there's a reason Seth Dawson makes it to the charity stripe as much as he does. That's a bad man. You don't want to mess with him as he gets ready for the first. That one's up, and that one's good. Adding on to his top free throw attempts here tonight on the Wildcats, and... Oh, yeah, like we said, I mean, the man can just draw a foul. A chance now to push his total to 14, and he's not going to be able to. This one will miss off the back iron, and it's going to, of course, be brought in by the Vikings. Bringing it up and out left. And a little bit of an interesting scenario. Now a foul is going to be called against Jello Lloyd. They'll likely classify this one as a reach. Yeah, That's a right fair there. one. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll give him that. Yeah, can't really get too mad at that one. Yeah. Best case scenario there, you force a jump ball, but when you're up by 20, you're not going to get that kind of leeway. Heads now moving their way out right, driving against Colby Jeanette, puts up the lamp and misses. Rebounded now by the Cats. Here comes Seth Dawson to Kevin Holden. At Holden against Johnson. He just dropped their leading score like that. Dropped him like a sack of potatoes. Here comes Western. Moving it over, it's stolen by Kevin Holden and it's thrown out of bounds. I don't know if I've seen a more majestic basketball game in my life. Jeez, Central just can't be stopped right now. They're owning all phases of the game. I mean, this is just not what we expected here tonight, Ryan. We thought this was gonna be a close game, but Central just asserting dominance in every phase. Yeah, let me tell you, this game's about as close as me and my ex-girlfriends. It doesn't work that way, folks. Western Washington needs to claw back in some way, shape, or form. Down by 22 in the den of the Wild Cats. I don't know what you think you're going to do here as Seth Dawson brings it across half court. Colby Jeanette bringing the screen. He's not going to use it. Instead, driving on his own. He's got Jeanette out left. He's going to drive, puts the shot up, but it would have entered through the bottom if it did go through. Luckily, it doesn't, and it's stolen by the Wildcats. Here's Swilly, puts up the layup. You can't stop him from getting that one. I mean, it's just another turnover from Western. I mean, it's just, it's been sloppy play tonight. There's no other way to put it. There really isn't. As now, once again, they search for something. Turnovers on what feels like the last three drives. Bringing it up and over. They kick it over to Johnson. Johnson, their leading scorer, goes up for the layup and he'll get this one. Cuts the lead to 22. Now here's Jello Lloyd bringing it up for the Cats. He's going to move this one over to Dawson, and Dawson, as the primary ball handler, will bring it up. 11 minutes remaining in the second half of action. Tossed up for Colby Jeanette and the alley oop layup. You don't see it often. We saw it on Saturday. We see it again. Now here's Western. With the ball in hand, moving it out right. Working against Colby Jeanette, they kick it out left. Here's a three-point opportunity, and they'll go, they're going to hit that one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. there you go. There you go. Hey, there's something to your favor. Yeah, that's, I mean, if you're Western, you got to hit a lot more of those, but that's a good start. You need to get some momentum going. And now Seth Dawson going to kick this one to the corner with Kevin Holden. 
Holden now working in. Popping some in and outs here as a foul is called, and this one's going to go against number 25, Lewis Grant Holiday. And just like that, we got a timeout on the court, so we'll take one, two, and be back in about 30 seconds here on 88 1 The Bird, your music central, as well as the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. 88 1 The Bird. Eighty-eight won the Berg, your music central, as well as the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. Ryan Gildersleeve, your play-by-play -play commentator for tonight, alongside Cash Brown. Ladies and gentlemen, I feel like I get a little more hyped every time we come back from the break. And this time, I've got more than a few reasons. 78 to 57, I got 21 of them. 21 reasons. Wow. Yeah. I, I, I don't even know, man. Yeah. I don't even know what to say. Yeah, I mean, this is just, I mean, this is the kind of stuff that you just love. I mean, and, you know, Western's had theirs in this rivalry. We've had ours. But anytime you go up against, you know, your mo your toughest, your you know, your most bitter opponent, and you're just out here destroying them in all phases of the game, it's got to feel good to be a Wildcat fan and a Wildcat player right now. And it's just, it's just such a morale boost going into the rest of the season. As now Samad Hector has the ball in his hands once more at the end of the break and gets it to go. 23 point lead now. And taking a step back to the 21. 21 point lead for the Cats there. 21 candles for Cash tonight. With that being said, we move it over as Western Washington bringing it up. Here's the shot going up. Johnson's going to be fouled by Samad Hector. Yeah, but yeah. yeah but thanks for the shout out. Right yeah, there. man. Cross midnight tonight and who knows what'll happen. <laughs> It's a celebration night for sure. Yeah, that it is. That it is. And honestly, we're about to have a whole nother reason. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, obviously, you can never say it's over till it's over, but it's definitely trending in the direction of being a, a Wildcats win here as Kai Johnson puts down that free throw. And so a couple of substitutions here for Western coming back onto the court's going to be Yelp or Welp. My apologies. Now here's Johnson shooting the free throw. And he's going to miss this one up and off the back iron. And the rebound goes to Maverick Sanders, but they're going to, oh, it'll appear that they wanted to call the jump ball. I'm not sure they did. So Central has possession one way or another. Jordan Clark, ball in hand for the Cats. He re-enters the game after quite the absence, it feels like, as he kicks this one into Samad Hector. Hector now to Holden, Holden to McNeil. McNeil moving his way out right. He's got Holden out left. He's going to kick it to Samad Hector in front of him. Hector now driving in. He's working against Welp. Trying to get some sort of space. He's going to put up a shot, miss it. Maverick Sanders attempts one and misses. So once again, the Wildcats unable to make anything of their second and third chance opportunities. Now Western. Ball in hand once more. Moving it all around. Got a couple players in the game that we haven't seen so far as that one touches the hands of Will Wilson before being moved over to Welp. Welp to Johnson. Johnson against Holden. Wow. A couple of nice dribble moves, but he can't get the ball in the hoop. And Central Washington retakes possession. This is a rough night for yeah. the Vikings. Everything about that play was good from Johnson except for the finish. I mean, boy, this crowd let him know again. Hey, and they're going to do that. I mean... I, I, I feel like I'm almost not familiar with this crowd, and I've been at every game this season. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not often you get to see Central Washington student section come out in this much support and have this much passion about a game, but again, that's just what rivalry games will bring you. Exactly, as a steal by the Vikings is going to give possession over to Western, and Will Wilson is fouled on his attempt at a layup there. A bit aggressive there on the on the defensive play, but uh, it's just going to happen. Yeah, that's just kind of the way it goes around. As 80 to 58, your score. A couple of shots coming here for Will Wilson. 83% from the line this year. 
Will Wilson. Will Wilson. Will Wilson. That's the name, if I'm thinking correctly, that's the name of the bus driver from Sky High as Will Wilson. Sky High? You remember that? No, I no. don't. I mean, the movie sounds familiar, but I... Is that a TV show? It's a it's a Disney movie. You gotta watch it. Oh, it's, it's the one about the superheroes. superheroes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I got you. I think so. It's either that or Ron Wilson. One of the two is. Now, Kevin Holden with the ball in hand kicks this one out left to Jordan Clark. Clark now back out right to McNeil. McNeil in to Hector. Hector back to... Now to... Whoa! They moved around a couple of times. I can't barely get my mind wrapped around it before Cameron McNeil knocks down the three. Yeah, he's been a little quiet tonight in terms of scoring, but McNeil, I mean, he was one of our most effective shooters from three last year, showing it again this year. So Western, once again now, they find themselves down by a big number, 23, the current separation, as a three-pointer is in and out. Central Washington doing their job and doing it well. Yeah, that's just kind of indicative of how this game has gone for Western so far. The in and out, I mean, you, <laughs> you tried to have it and just no luck there on getting that one to fall, but, and yeah, this really just has been a one-sided game. It has. And you know, that was another one of those just wide open shots for him. As now Seth Dawson has it. He's patrolling the court. He's got about eight minutes remaining in the second half, so. Can't imagine chewing the clock as much of an option as they kick this one out left to Jello Lloyd. Jello Lloyd now driving, puts up a high layup, but that one's gonna be a little too high. Samad Hector unable to reel in the rebound and Western retakes possession. It'll be Johnson, the inbounder, or so it appears, as whistles blow. And it appears we've got a media timeout. So just like that, we'll take a 30 second break and be back in just about 30 seconds here on ADA One The Berg, your music central, as well as the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. Eighty-eight won the Berg, your music central, as well as the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. Ryan Gildersleeve, your play-by-play -play broadcaster, alongside Cash Brown, as we cover all of tonight's action. And like we've said earlier, action is one way of describing what we've seen. But to me, it's uh, it's something else. Honestly, I don't know if I've even got the time to fully get my thoughts in order, as the Wildcats lead at twenty-three points over the opposition. Yeah, I mean, you said it. You said it just about as good as you can, Ryan. There's, there's not a whole lot to say that we haven't already. I mean, Western just simply hasn't been on the level of Central tonight. God, at the break, a $2,500 putt. Yeah. Can you believe it? it? Must have felt like a PGA Tour guy out there. You have to imagine, especially with you know, you got the cheer squad lining both of the, the sidelines. It, it looked like. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that, it's just a lot of pressure. This is yeah. the most packed this place has been in. Years probably. Yeah, put, putts are stressful enough as is. Can't imagine having a whole stadium watching. Exactly. I mean, I yeah, full court to work on my short game. I don't think. So. Yeah, I mean, it's not even much of a putt. He could have chipped it in. Right. As now Western kicking it around the perimeter. Will Wilson ends up with it as he drives now against Dawson. Puts up the shot and yeah, he's a mid-range merchant. That's a that's a good shot there from Will Wilson though. I mean, he's able he's able to get the separation that he needed and, and hit the fadeaway shot. You just you have I mean, it's just one of those too little too late things it almost feels like you you've had a couple of threes in this half and a couple of good shots that you could have put down, but just again, they just haven't been able to stay on the level of the Wildcats. As now Jordan Clark with the ball, he's going to kick this one over to Cameron McNeil. McNeil now against Wilson, kicks it back and Clark, 3. Bang! Just like that, another three on the board for the Wildcats. They lead it by 24. Yeah, I mean, have we seen the Wildcats look this efficient from mid-range and three so far this season? I, I don't know if we have. I, that's quite the point, as now here's Johnson getting this one to go. 
Johnson, that's going to push his scoring total up to oh, 22. That's, that's not good, you don't want to see that. Samad Hector slow to get up there on the play. Looks like he's definitely favoring that right ankle, but yeah, he's, he's still fine. good to go. And that's what you love to see. That is, you know, and he's had such a phenomenal game tonight. Um, in his student section, let him know it right there. He, he would be a tough loss and glad to see him get up quickly and uh, it doesn't seem like to be any major injury. Well, and let me tell you, I mean, Samad Hector, he's one of those players really where if he, you, yeah, I mean, if you lose him, you could, you could keep that guy on the court even if he had a broken ankle and just his aura is going to get guys to miss. It's one of those situations where it's like, hey, you know, throw Jordan out on the court. Have him sit in a wheelchair the whole time or something. They're still not going to score against him as now here are the Cats moving it around. Jordan Clark. Excuse me, Seth Dawson with the ball. He moves it over to Hector. Hector now wants Jello Lloyd. Instead, he gets Cameron McNeil. McNeil working against his defender, takes the step back midi. Won't be able to hit that one. And just wait until Samad Hector hears he got compared to Michael Jordan. <laughs> As here's the shot. It's going to go. It's going to go. Western puts two on the board there. And yeah, yeah, no, that that might that might have been just a tad far. It might have been a bit of a stretch, just but you know, I got the comparison. It was the, it was the yeah. aura comparison. You know what, what do they I mean to their team? Exactly. Yeah, I understand. As here's Dawson moving it to Hector. Hector's fouled as he goes up for the shot, and just like that, two more opportunities for Samad Hector to bolster his scoring totals. And Jordan for or sorry, excuse me, Hector from the line, 75 percent so far tonight. Not tonight over the whole season. Just like that. As now we await the first opportunity from the charity stripe. This one off the back iron and missed. Didn't listen to my own advice. I gotta wait until they shoot the first yeah, one it's to one mention of those the things. percentage. It's a difficult one. It is. But then it's like if you have a one and one, what do you do? Yeah, Here's the second shot and he's gonna nail that one. Okay. So it's all right, yeah. it's all right. It, it all works out. In the end. Well, that's a uh, balance. It is, yeah. it is. You can't, you can't know what rain feels like. If I actually, never mind. We're, we're not. I gonna, got where you were going yeah. with that, but I think you started the analogy yeah, at the I end of the analogy. <laughs> I started it backwards, but and there's another air ball yeah. from Western. I, I mean, this thing is just, <laughs> this thing's just getting ugly. Oh, and Western's man. been so effective scoring, and, and from the three-point line. I mean, as a team, they're shooting almost 40 percent from three this year. So you really have to just wonder what what's up with the shots tonight. They're not getting anything to fall. It feels like. I yeah, I just. There's not a whole lot of explaining that I feel like you can do as here's Seth Dawson driving and getting it to go. I wow. mean, it's just been it's just been dominant. I the, mean, the cats have been threading the needle yeah, all night. It's 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 been an it's been an unbelievable performance in, in such a, a heated game from the Wildcats and Western just hasn't been able to compete as Will Wilson a throw one up right there, but it's 16th points of the game so far. Yeah. Jeez. Now Jello Lloyd working against Johnson. Step back three ball. Unable to get that one to go, but you know this place would have lit up if he did. Now Johnson, he's going to bring it back for the Vikings. Working against Clark, moving it out right now. He's going to kick this one over to Wilson. Wilson now moving out left, still on the perimeter. Takes the three over Hector. That there it is. Clean. Yeah, there it is. I mean, that, that's what Western's been needing all night. I mean, instead of these air balls or these misses, these wide open three misses, you need to make those, you know, kind of contested threes. And that's what set them apart this year so far. We just haven't seen it tonight from them, unfortunately. It definitely looks like one of those situations where Will Wilson's taking it upon himself to show them that the touches might need to be allocated a little bit differently if you want this team to be successful. Yeah. As Seth Dawson kicking it to the outside. Here's Bradley Swilly taking the scroll and out right mid range, unable to get to go another in and out situation as now Will Wilson brings it up he kicks this one to Welp. Welp now to the interior working against Samad Hector and they'll call the foul as he misses the shot. Yeah you're feeling a bit of a momentum swing here just a little bit right now as Central's had three empty possessions and uh, assuming that he makes these free throws right here that's going to be you know three times that Western's done what Central's done to him all night which is capitalize off turnovers. And this place gets loud for Welp to miss the first free throw. People jumping up, getting happy. I don't even, I don't got the words to explain it, folks. You got to be here to believe it. Just listen. Uh, Welp 
He'll put that one down. Yeah, what you heard there was not necessarily what you would have wanted as Seth Dawson now taken back over. He's going to bring it across half court. And the Wildcats once again kicking it off. You have to feel like this is, you just hit Y in the play select screen, and now you're taking knees at the 25 yard line for the next four minutes. It's yeah, and, and that's like. what Central needs to do is just kind of slow it down. I mean, really drain that play cock out, and hopefully you can. There's a, they're going to give that one. Are they calling a foul here? I don't believe so. It's just the, yeah, it's, it, they're just going to say Jello Lloyd lost that one. But yeah, a timeout called on the court. So we'll take one too. Be back in about 30 seconds here on 88 on the Berg, your music central, as well as the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. Eighty-eight won the Berg, your Music Central, as well as the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. Ryan Gildersleeve, your play-by-play -play broadcaster, alongside Cash Brown. As folks, we have a game on our hands. Eighty-nine to seventy-two. Your score currently: the Wildcats lead it by seventeen here at home, with an opportunity to knock off the number one offense in the GNAC. Three minutes and 48 seconds separate the Wildcats from a real good night. Yeah, I mean, and, and it would take a real miracle for Western to come back in this one. I mean, you'd have to really, for lack of a better word, you'd have to really blow it if you were Central Washington here. I mean, like you said, it's at that point where you're basically just taking the ball down the court and running that play clock down until there's no time left. But to get a couple more points on the board certainly wouldn't hurt the Wildcats' case. You really couldn't imagine it would as Jello Lloyd is going to toss this one into Samad Hector who takes a wide open mid-range shot. He's just putting, honestly, they're just practicing at this point. Get your shots, make sure that stroke feels right. As now they drive in, kick this one to the exterior and they work it on into the interior, but it'll find its way out of bounds off of the hand of Seth Dawson. Vikings retain possession as fans begin to Try and beat the traffic, it appears. Johnson, ball in hand, working out right. He's got an open man. He's going to kick to the perimeter instead of the post. And it's going to work out in his favor. Two more points. And they're going to try and play that press right here. But, the, oh, and if McNeil could have hold on, I was going to say that's what you're giving up. I would have been jumping. I would have been doing backflips. This cord would have been pulled out of our system setup here. But... It yeah, was not the case. Deficit drops to 15 here, Ryan, and... It's not ideal. No. Dropped by about nine points in the last minute yeah, of game it's, time. It's not what you want to see, but that is Seth if you're a Dawson Wildcat fan. Brings in the steal. He's got Jello Lloyd in the corner. Three. Oh, unable to get it to go. Yeah, that could have that could have been all but, you know, the ice right there. And uh, unfortunately, that one's not going to fall. I was ready to drop the hammer on that one, Cash. I'm telling you, I had the arm swinging, ready to go, but unfortunately, we're unable to give it over as Samad Hector is going to be called for a foul, and two shots are going to come to the Vikings' favor. And, you know, I mean, credit to the Vikings where it's due. They're still out here fighting to the very end. You got to respect it, and... Um, you know, it's looking closer and closer. I mean, the missed free throw right there doesn't help, but you're definitely cutting this deficit down. It's by no means likely, I'd say right now, but they're, they're doing what they can to try and get back into this game. So Seth Dawson, once again, going to get the ball in his hands, toss it over to Samad Hector, and they're trying to run down the clock. Yeah, I mean, and that's the smart thing to do right here. As now Cameron McNeil, wide open three, he's not going to get it to go. Yeah, and I mean, those, I mean, you just got to be making those shots right now if you want to ice this game right here. Yeah, that's two straight opportunities to put a nail in the coffin for Central, and yeah. they've missed them both. So. Yeah. Obviously, you're still not falling behind too far. But no, you're not. You're not concerned necessarily right now if you're Central. Right. But I mean, it's it's not what you want to see. It definitely. Get, I mean, it tightens the nerves a little bit if you're the Wildcats. That's for certain. Hey, I mean, all I'm saying is I think that the higher the win, the better. As 
I could sure use the backing. Here's Cameron McNeil. He up, down. That man can fly. And there's what we were talking about. You needed one more of those just silencer plays right there in Central Washington. Man, they needed that right there. Now the Vikings on the other end, missing the mid-range shot. Feels like the first half all over again. Yeah, there you go. The momentum Another just steal. The momentum just swings right there, and that's exactly what the Wildcats wanted. As Seth Dawson now going to re take the ball across half court. We'll see if they intentionally foul with under two minutes now remaining, and it doesn't appear that they want to. Jordan Clark now with the ball, kicks it to Jello Lloyd. Lloyd to the corner, Cameron McNeil. Now over to Dawson. Dawson's going to put up a shot and be fouled. And that's, yeah, uh, well, what can you say? A chance to kick it up to 93 points on the night for the Cats. Yeah, and I mean, we're about to match Western's point average on the night here. So if that doesn't tell you anything about this game, I don't know what does. I mean, the Wildcats have just looked like the better team. And, you know, that dunk that McNeil had, I mean, more than just adding two points to the board, it just demoralizes this Western team. And you can't imagine that that was anything other than the intended possibility. Oh, absolutely. There. And I mean, you fire up this crowd, you get the dunk in wide open, uncontested. I mean, that's exactly what you wanted as a Wildcat. Absolutely. So now the second shot is attempted and it's knocked down. So just like that, two up, two down, 93 to 74. As Will Wilson, ball in hand, he's matched up against Jalo Lloyd. Now he's going to kick this one back on over. Attempts the mid-range shot off the back iron and rebounded by Samad Hector. So Samad now will bring it up. Primary ball handler for the Cats. Kicks this one over to Clark. Clark now to Dawson. Dawson moving out left. Still at the top of the key. Folks, there's not a whole lot that's going to change here. Moved over. J-Lo Lloyd takes the step back. Standing on the logo. Doing his thing. Six seconds on the shot clock, takes the step back, moves it over to McNeil. McNeil, wide open, three ball, bang, gets it. Dagger to the heart here for Western. I mean, you're just running up the score at this point, and like you said, this, this game is past the point of no return. Yeah. It probably has been for a while. Yeah. Yeah, this, this, one's, uh, this one's got the smell of defeat on it. Man. Yeah, and you can just tell in the body language of Western, especially on defense, they've, they've kind of given up. It's just kind of, I mean, it's how the end of basketball games work, you know. If, if you're down by this much, you kind of just want to pack up and get out of here, especially, you know, to, to avoid this crowd heckling you on the way out, as they are most certainly going to do. As Johnson knocks down the first free throw, gets ready for the second. Let me tell you, Cash, uh, typically you see a Gatorade shower to celebrate a victory. I feel like we might see one today to wash away some sins. As the second shot will not go. Rebounded by the Cats. Clark with the ball in hand. He's going to toss this one up. And it's J-Lo Lloyd with it once more. He's got 40 seconds on the clock to work with. They're going to attempt what looked like an intentional foul. I can't imagine why they would do that at this point. Johnson's going to intentionally foul as if it means anything. All it means is that their team's going to get some more points run up on them. So. Uh, it's, you know, again, it's just, if, if you were in Western shoes right now, this is your most bitter rival. I, like we've said, I mean, you can't want to go out quietly. I mean, no, I, you're it, right. I, I, you can't really blame the man. I'm sure emotions are high and this just isn't what Western was expecting coming in here. And so the second free throw opportunity for Clark now. We'll see if he can get this one to go. Puts it up. Not able to drop that one down. So just like that, Western going to bring the ball across the court for what will probably be the final time. Attempts the three-point shot. Misses. Samad Hector with the rebound. No more shot clock. And... Oh, there's a foul, excuse me, an injury on the court, or so it appears. It's Johnson. So, unfortunate there, but he's going to stay on the court. Clock did stop. Seems kind of redundant now. Yeah. I mean, you got 23 seconds left. I, I can't imagine why they wouldn't just let them, you know, walk this one out. Yeah. And I think they're going to is... Uh, this game will be over unless we want to try something crazy and put up 100 All I'm saying is, you got triple digits on the radar if you want it. You have triple digits on the radar if you want it. He won't do it. He won't do it. Seth Dawson. 
He won't Seth do it. Seth Dawson, he won't be do a menace. It. He won't do it. <laughs> he won't do it. Ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. And that's the sound of victory as your Central Washington Wildcats bring home the win by a total of 97 to 75. They shut down the number one offense in the GNAC, make them look like Simon Fraser University cat. Yeah, I mean, and now you're sitting here at Central, you're five and three in conference play. Western drops down to four and four. Simon Fraser's down there towards the bottom of, of the GNAC in terms of offense, only next to Alaska. So yeah, what a comparison right there. Just another dagger to the heart, but uh, I mean, we said it all game. The Wildcats were the better team. They came out here tonight. They looked like they wanted it more. They were more physical in the paint. Um, they were hitting their shots more. They were more disciplined. Not as many turnovers. Not as many, you know, not as many mistakes. And I mean, if that doesn't win you a basketball game, I don't know what will. Hey, let me tell you, Cash, there's a whole lot of things that went in to winning this game. Central Washington had it all going, firing on all cylinders, like you said. Central Washington was going from the beginning of the game. Folks, as this one ends, Samad Hector, 23 points. J-Lo Lloyd, 18 of his own. Cameron McNeil with 12. Seth Dawson with 17. Six for Jordan Clark. And it just keeps going. Every player on the Wildcats was impactful. You can run it down the list. The great defense by Colby Jeanette in that first half. The great defense by Mitch Brizzy every time he touched the court. Samad Hector, of course, shut down the post just like we knew he was going to do. Put up the scoring total that we know him to be able to do. And ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the night, one team stays in the win column. One team remains victorious. The momentum carries on to this Saturday as your Central Washington Wildcats men's basketball team wins yet another game. Folks, for Ryan Gildersleeve, Cash Brown, 88 won the Berg, and the Central Washington University Athletics live stream, we are signing off.